In the 2009 Australian Survey of Social Attitudes, 47% of Australians described themselves as spiritual, while only 39% said that they were religious. The same result has been replicated in the United States, Canada and many other Western countries. Where Australian bookshops used to have shelves of philosophy and theology, they now have large spirituality sections instead. With exotic possibilities such as crystal power, aromatic massage, astral travel, discovering the goddess within, whale music for self-soothing, you name it. Spirituality is all the rage. Of course, Catholicism has always honoured diverse forms of meditation, prayer, devotion and action with many cultural expressions complementing each other. Fifty years ago this year, the Second Vatican Council in Nostra Aetate honoured everything that is good and true in every religion of the earth. We have nothing to fear from sound spirituality. The risk, however, in an increasingly secularised consumer culture like ours is that talk of spirituality is code for religion light. Religion without creeds or rules or hierarchies, religion without sacraments or self-sacrifice, religion that makes no demands and simply affirms us in being and doing as we like. Such spiritual diners are free to pick and choose from the spiritual smorgasbord. For whatever we think of these things, they do point to a craving in the human heart. The survival of what blessed Paul VI called the religious sense. People still reach out, however imperfectly, for something beyond themselves. That is interesting in an era in which many commentators predicted the death of God and the end of faith. No doubt there are many people today, especially many young people, who seem to be inoculated to religion. They think nothing is true, or true for everyone, or true for very long. Getting our own way is what matters, not compromising to anything outside ourselves. And some people who do believe that there is truth are cynical or angry with the church. They think churchmen have failed people, especially young people, sometimes in appalling ways. As the Royal Commission hearings in Ballarat this week have reminded us yet again. Yet mysteriously, perhaps, that's not everyone by any means, not even every young adult. Only this week past, at the launch of our World Youth Day pilgrimage for next year, many hundreds of young people declared their interest and if they persevere, they are likely to be kneeling beside four or five million of their peers in Krakow, Poland. Despite our all too evident limitations, 
and detractors. The church survives, and most of her members want a Catholicism that is rather more full cream than the religion light pop spiritualities. Yet how do we know when a spiritual movement is of the Holy Spirit? Rather than merely the spirit of the age or of ourselves. The Pentecost story tells us how. First, Mary and the apostles gathered in a room for prayer. Any true Christian spirituality begins here, in the horizontal instinct to gather and in the vertical instinct to pray. We are a communion of saints, or would-be saints, in communion with God. Catholic spirituality is essentially God-directed and church-supported. Christ it is who summons us in the Father's name to that upper room to pray and worship, give and receive. He gathers us so he might nourish us with his word, the scriptures, and his body, the Eucharist, that we might receive his Holy Spirit. So it was at the birth of the church, at the first Pentecost, so it is today, two millennia later. At Pentecost, Mary, Peter and the lads gathered to watch and pray. Then we see the second element of any genuine Christian spirituality. God came in power and love. God picked the disciples rather than the disciples picking him. God descended as tongues of flame, tongues to give them words, flame to fire up their hearts. In the process, ordinary blokes and gals became preachers and martyrs. It required commitment and self-sacrifice the testimony of lives and even deaths, first from Christ himself and then from his followers. Though we call him the Comforter, the God of Pentecost does more than affirm us and make us comfortable. He sometimes turns us inside out converting and commissioning us. We have many names for that spirit because no word captures his mystery and because he works in diverse ways in different people. In our gospel today, he is called our advocate, truth's spirit and Christ's witness. We also call him paraclete, peace, breath, light, counsellor, love. St Thomas Aquinas thought grace or gift an especially good name for the Holy Spirit. Though we say Mary was full of it, and readily splash the word around. I suspect many Catholics would be stumped if asked to explain grace. Some might say grace is a prayer you say before meals, or the name of an actress who became a princess, or a furniture removalist company. But grace is the name for God moving us 
to gather and pray, moving us to ask. Grace is the name for God sharing his life and love with us in answer to our asking. And thirdly, grace is the name of us being moved again by him to respond in our own lives and loves. Pentecost offers us one last insight into genuine spirituality, the truly graced life. As we heard in our first reading, after gathering in Christ's name and receiving the Holy Spirit, the disciples started talking. Not about themselves, but about Christ. Not just to the like-minded, but to Parthians, Medes, Elamites, Aussies, you name it. Perfumed oils and crystals are private and only spread through marketing. But the Holy Spirit is public and like wildfire, he communicates himself through all who receive him. The apostles had barely received the Spirit and they were off to Rome, Greece and Turkey to Spain, Scotland, and even India, with words of life for others. Dear candidates for confirmation, in a few moments you will be sealed with the gifts of the Holy Spirit, receiving his sevenfold grace. In return, he asks for a gift from you. He wants you, like those apostles, to give the gift of your own testimony to him. We must be witnesses to Christ and to the love of the Father. You can do that in your own words and deeds. You can do that by studying the Holy Scriptures and the teachings of the Church. You can do that by regularly participating in Mass and Confession and spiritual and corporal works of mercy, doing good things for others. Sponsors, catechists and pastors of our candidates, friends and family, Today our candidates will receive the fire of Pentecost into their hearts. Help keep that flame alive by encouraging them in lives of Christian faith and practice, of virtue and holiness, of the worship of God and love for all. Dear candidates for confirmation, Today, God gives you the grace to be all you could be and should be as the children of God, as missionary disciples of our church. And so I will ask you in a few moments to stand up and join the rest of us in professing your faith before all the world. Come, Holy Spirit.